yeah, now we are live. So yeah, please go ahead. Uh, your thoughts about the stats? Uh, yeah, I uh, in the beginning you were actually watching the game and you um, were telling me to buy stats if I play with a Dragon Knight. And um, yeah, I did so and uh, this somehow put into my mind that I should uh, try to, uh, let's say, play a kill lane. Uh, so I'd, I harassed him a lot, which we, we will also see. Um, but I should have realized at a certain point that I'm not able to kill him because I just kept wasting mana. Uh, so um, till what level would you try to harass and kill him? And um, if you recognize it doesn't work, then uh, would you max uh, go for a more like remnant, max remnant build? Or what would you do? Right, right. So th that's a lot of... Uh talking points already. The reason I set stats in the first place was not because uh, you would be suddenly able to be more aggressive with him. I mean, yes, as a byproduct, you will be. But mm. the stats, you buy the stats just to have a better time in lane because DK at level 1, level 2 is quite neutered and really cannot do anything to you to uh, prevent you from simply taking all the farm you can take so to put it uh, to put it in different words you spend your gold on stats stats which is always uh, the best way to spend gold on because you know i mean you expect to be able to freely last hit the first two waves and get battle before two minutes anyway you do not buy stats when you know you will have harder time last hitting and if he would have harder time last hitting, buying stats would delay your battle. But the reason we buy stats here is because by definition against DK, your battle, assuming with the correct gameplay, should arrive before 3 minutes. Okay, okay. So, uh, you um, like buying stats, you do it uh, to be able to last hit the creeps more efficiently, right? Is it? Exactly. Stats will always be better. More health, more mana, uh, better right clicks. So, yeah. Okay. So, against the Lina lane, you would uh, uh, like start with maybe these items here and try to get the bottle as soon as possible, right? Yeah. Uh, to put it in different words again, uh, stats are best in the free farm lanes. And the rushing battle is better is, is 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 best when you are not certain if you'll be able to dance freely around the mid lane. Okay, shit, I understood you wrongly because uh, I always had in mind if you buy stats, you want to trade a lot and uh, like you want to trade better because you have stats, right? Doesn't make sense if you don't have any stats items and then you want to hit him and he has uh, stat items or something. Uh, so that's why I was more like trying to play kill lane was. I think um, it's one of the biggest reasons um, why I had troubles in the early game and couldn't really, and this uh, like um, fucked up my mid game because I was, yeah, I I, I think if I went uh, maximum remnant or something like more, uh, try not to um, waste so much mana with harassing, I would have been more able to push out the waves faster. Uh, like if I had more mana and then I could uh, at least not lose the tower so early, like because DK also, if he hits level six, uh, he mostly wants to take my tower. And uh, yeah, I, I, I was just not strong enough due to that. But uh, the other mistakes you mentioned, I have no idea. Uh, idea. You, I think you, uh, it's pretty fresh on your mind. You just watched the uh, replay of the game. Uh, some minutes ago, so I think you still know them, right? The mistakes which were so glaring. Oh yeah, I think I'll be able to point them out. So, but yeah, yeah. what you said, what you said about the stats is correct. Your reasoning is correct, but uh, I think you're forgetting one crucial point: is that every single lane is dynamic. Just because you bought stats does not mean that you're now locked in a kill lane. Yeah. If if you see if you die once, you can always adapt and go jungle. If if you see that you no longer have a kill potential, you can always adapt and and, and swap your item build. I think yeah. your, your biggest, uh, well, not the biggest, one of the more uh, obvious, so to say, errors in the early game is that you continued to play a kill lane after 
it was not so beneficial to play the kill lane. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I should have recognized. Like, um, I mean, I, I should have known that. Uh, like against DK, it's uh, similar as against Morphling. You can try to kill him in the first levels uh, when he doesn't have his morph. Like, um, the morph is not so strong. And after that, it's uh, nearly impossible to kill Morphling. Uh, only if he made a mistake, like you saw it uh, later when I uh, was level six and uh, I TP'd from the base to the tower, I tried to kill him. Um, maybe it would have succeeded if there was no lash rack TP. I'm not even sure, but yeah. Oh yeah, I, I also had some pointers about that, but uh, I mean, we'll get there when we'll get there. Uh, we'll just do a minute by minute playthrough. Mm -hmm. So unless you still have some pre laning questions, I think about it now. Uh, shout it out. Otherwise, we'll we'll just uh, yeah, we'll just pause and discuss minute by minute. Yeah, we can. All right. You mentioned I I had uh, almost one mistake in uh, per minute, so it should also be in the early uh, like in the first minute, right? <laughs> yes, right now. Yes, yes, yes. Right okay, now, okay. Yes. Yeah, just let me know. I don't know. I uh, wasn't joking. I I did see some corrections we can make in your gameplay. Yeah, currently I also suck. It's a mixture of both. So I don't know. Okay, so again, a lot of your movements will be dependent on the nature of the lane. Just like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, against a DK, mm -hmm. he does not have tools to mess with the last hits in the first few levels. Now, uh, the way you lane with Storm, if you can push the wave, you will always push the wave, because pushing the wave is always the best option. Uh, you have the wave clear, you have the tools to do it. The enemy cannot prevent you from, from pushing the wave. Yep. So especially here against DK, the first thing you do, you have perfect block. The block is just beautiful. I, first thing I, you I, do, say, uh, I should have hit the uh, range creep three times and then uh, drop the remnant and hit it again. Or I, I don't know even know is it, if it's is it uh, hitting it three times, dropping remnant, hitting it, so it needs uh, one remnant and uh, four hits. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah, you can do it several ways, but yes, you are absolutely correct and. Just like I said, man, you will see the mistakes yourself once once we once we get into the replay mode. So yeah, yeah you I'm are so correct. Stupid. I'm so stupid. I, I I'm okay. Maybe I mean it's uh, here. I just woke up and it was my first game. Maybe to play with it. But now that I see it, I know what you mean. Yeah, uh, I had the perfect block. I should have um, hit the remnant um, three or four times and then drop the remnant, get the melee creep, and uh, repeat. And then I would have uh, uh, had more ma mana. Uh, for um, I mean, I used it more efficiently. Uh, yeah, but did he deny some here? Oh yes, shit! Fuck this game. This first wave was a disaster. Yes, I know. I see it. I admit it. Uh, it was stupid. Okay, but I, I, I also told you that I should have done better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, but I got the <laughs> deny here. I remember. The deny was nice. Yes. Yeah. And as you can see, uh. Ignoring the fact that uh, the last hits got messed up, this is what you want. You want mm -hmm. the creeps under his tower. This gives you some yeah. free movements yeah. for a deny, which exactly which is exactly what happens. And then the next wave will meet under mm -hmm. his tower, which again is freedom for you. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, right now, would you harass DK like I did, or would you have uh, more uh, hit the creeps? Uh, let's put it this way. Every single movement you make should work towards something. If you know you cannot effectively harass the mid laner, then you should try to equalize the enemy creep's health in a way that if the enemy tries to deny, he cannot do that because he will be busy last hitting. Did that make sense? Uh, yeah, yes. So, uh, Right now, I, I know that I cannot really kill DK also because he's, I mean, I he's level two. So if I harass him, it mostly would uh, he would region through this few hits that I can get off during this time. So you would actually try to get the creeps a bit low, lower for the remnants. Yes, uh, just so you don't need to waste mana, because mana for Storm is, is everything. You can just mimic what the range creep is doing and attack the same creep. And this way you get a last hit without using mana. And, and DK should not be able to deny it freely because he would be busy last hitting his under the tower. 
So yeah, let's let's get one thing out of the way, which we have talked about. The DK is absolutely not a kill lane. Even if you get him low, which you did get him low a couple of times, even if you get him low, it's not the same as a Zeus, for example. If you get Zeus low and he selves just in a few hits, just in a, rep in a Vortex combo, Zeus will be low again, he will be in a risk. But against a DK, to get him low, you will have to waste your entire mana pool. And if he, if he selves, your efforts are for nothing. That's it. Yep. You yep. lost the lane. You have no mana. You have nothing. Yeah, I know. It's stupid. It should have... Oh. No. So yeah, uh, there will be moments in the future where you will still try to make a kill lane against the DK. I would like to avoid commenting on that because I've just made my point that DK is yeah. absolutely not a kill lane. Yeah. So from here on now, we'll just ignore DK as a hero entirely and focus on our farming movements. What what would what we could have done better here? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's cool, good. cool, cool. Sounds good. So yeah, you see you see how the range creep is attacking this uh, this melee guy right here. Yeah. And now you have placed the remnant to last hit, and that's exactly what I was talking about one minute ago. You can actually use a normal actual right click to get a last yeah. hit because DK is busy with your creep, which is getting killed yeah. by the tower. Okay. If you recognize these moments in in the future, this will save you a lot of mana. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, sometimes the problem with Storm is I tend to be too lazy. Oh, that's not a good mindset on any hero, not just Storm. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, it's, it has a reason because uh, with uh, melee re uh, heroes like Ember or something uh, or Void Spirit, I mostly have a, um, this um, what's called again the Quelling Quelling Blade, so I have more right click damage. I think right uh, with Quelling Blade, you have a bit more right click damage damage than uh, with Storm. Then right. Yes. Yeah, and that's yeah. why I'm not lazy on the, these heroes. Uh, still, that's um, the actual damage. Right click damage doesn't mean a lot just because you have so many tools yeah. to mitigate that. Like, for example, like I said, under the tower, the damage doesn't matter because now the enemy is busy and you have creeps. So yeah. even if you even if you have dirty damage, if you are techies or crystal maiden, you would still have the last hit because the enemy simply doesn't have the time to mess with it. Okay, so I need to memorize if the enemy is, if it, the lane is under the enemy's tower and he's bit busy, or uh, generally if the enemy is busy and I can just hit down the creep, I should hit it down without using mana. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, more, the more moments you recognize where you can save mana, the more mana you will have in the long run to make other plays. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Should have, should memorize that. I think I need easy words like these, which uh, they help me. Like you, you had uh, you mentioned some simple concepts in the past, uh, which I still use uh, because I don't know. Like my brain works this way. I think like uh, I need simple stuff. Like also during my, um, I mean, I started studied, and during my studies, I also uh, was trying to. I, I had really um, complex stuff, so I always tried to break them down into simple stuff, and this is what I could memorize. If you if the things are too complex, I, I don't, I cannot really use them. <laughs> so is, is this a good breakdown for you? Yeah, yeah it's good. I, right. I, I, I told you the senses which I want to memorize. Yeah, I don't know. Dota is uh, pretty complex uh, and yeah. Excellent. Well. Yeah, that's good. That last hit and the, and the deny at the same time. Well, and the harass at the same time. That's good, that's good. Yeah. And again, uh, same same thing. The wave is at your high ground, you have full control. If you push out right now, you should have the bottle ready and shipped, and the wave yeah. will again meet under his tower. Yeah. These One are the moments you need to recognize and think about. Yeah. One question here, you would also hit the uh, range creep three times and then remnant? Yes, still. The DK, in before level 6, DK simply has no tools to prevent you from free farming. And just like as we mentioned, if you can free farm, you should free farm. Yeah. Actually, it's a very great uh, mistake. I could also be doing in other matches because <laughs> I always um, think about like the first wave. If if I I have good block, I hit the range creep and then push out the wave. But uh, I forgot the waves after that. Some, maybe it could be 
that I like in these lanes where the enemy cannot really um, disturb me from doing that, that I never do it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, let me let me try to comprehend your thought process. Um, because you do not recognize when you have freedom in the mid lane, you try not to adjust the wave in your favor. Is that what you meant? Uh, well, well, you your brain works the other way. I think you need some complex stuff. Uh, you have <laughs> complex stuff. No, uh, what I meant is um, simply put, uh, I uh, for the first wave wave when I have a good block, and uh, I mostly uh, like in this game I didn't, but I I mostly know that I should uh, hit the range creep and then drop a remnant and uh, try to get the um, la two losses like the range and the melee creep. Uh, just by dropping one remnant and also that I can push out the lane fast. And actually the situation in the wave before this wave, I had the same situation, but I didn't recognize it uh, or I didn't um, think about it because I mostly maybe do it in the very first wave, but not after that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see. So you're saying it just, you should recognize it and play it more often. Yeah. Yeah. In the future. I mean, yes, I agree. Uh, for you and for any viewers who will be watching this video in the future, as a storm, as a as any wave clear hero, if you can push the wave, just push the wave. Uh, there will be some scenarios where keeping the wave static will yield better results, but as a general rule, especially in lower MMRs, even if you don't understand why or how uh, or what the next uh, outcome will be, just push the wave. Seriously, that's the best advice I can give for climbing a MMR. Just push the wave. Yep. Uh, what would be the scenarios where you don't want to push the wave? Is it because you get too much harassment during this, maybe against a Huska, or would it be that you uh, that you expect a gank and want the it on your high ground? Or? Uh, most of the times, it is to capitalize on the advantage. So, for example, if you have performed a good vortex combo and the enemy is now low if you hold away on your high ground he will be scared to approach and in the long run you will out out farm him and out level him just because he's too too scared to approach the lane but if you send the creeps under his tower then he is free farming as well okay got you uh one question actually um i have um let, let's assume this it's a lane um, where the enemy hero is so weak that he needs to be jungling, and you know that he's jungling, would you also uh, like keep the lane, um, keep the wave always under your uh, on your high ground? Uh, because um, otherwise, you would uh, like push the wave and um, go jungle yourself, but the enemy um, would be jungling and then going back to the tower to get the experience and. Um, gold from the creeps, which he wouldn't have got because he's too weak and needs to jungle. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, if the enemy would, if the enemy spends more time, <clears throat> sorry, in the jungle instead of the lane, then by all means, you should still be pushing because that will create pressure for the enemy to uh, walk back to the lane faster. Which, which by result will, he will, he will just have to walk a bit more. But if yeah, yeah. if the lane is static, then he will what he will just drink his tea, finish this camp, then start moving towards mid and be chest and arriving and be arriving just in time for the creep wave. But if you keep the wave, the waves pushed, then he simply will not have time to be at two places at once. Yeah, got it. Uh, this moment, this mm -hmm. moment right here, uh, against heroes that do not have mm, good mobility. So against anyone that isn't a Queen of Pain or, or a Puck or some similar. First, always make sure you last hit every single creep before you venture out. Mm. Uh, you are not in danger of dying. You are not in danger of... of, of you are not in dire need of, of regeneration. Uh, there was no reason to abandon this creep here because that puts it at a risk of being denied. If DK stayed in the lane, he could have easily simply done that creep before you returned. Okay, so you would have killed the um, range creep with maybe a remnant and then run run to the rune? Or... Yes, if if the enemy is not in position to deny it and just last it normally, if he is then remnant, 
and only only after there is no farm to be missed do you walk out. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> because yeah, right now we have missed the creep. Yeah. While DK walked in and out without losing anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's... Maybe in this lane I should also hit hit the range here again, right? Or yes, every single wave. If you see the positional advantage, you use it. Oh shit. I uh, yeah, maybe it's also stuff uh, which I don't have so often in my games because uh, mostly the enemy mid laner is not such a an easy mid mid laner, you know. Because uh, DK, now I see it I, and talk with you about it. Uh, it I recognize it, but uh, like sometimes you have Queen of Pain or I don't know some other like um, maybe sniper or I, I don't know which heroes I played against. But uh, some some um, some heroes are more nasty that you cannot just do it easily without or Shadow Fiend, right? Uh, or Necroforce, uh, like heroes where you cannot really walk up to the uh, lane. But uh, now we talk about it uh, like against DK or maybe it's also Morph, right? Uh, I'm not sure about yes, Morph. Yes, sure, sure. Yeah, Morph is the same. Same. No oh, shit. Yeah, that's uh, actually something I never thought about. Somehow because uh, I was like, oh. Let me interject from since this patch. Yeah, there are way more heroes you can dance freely against because of the additional runes. So Queen of Pain, I'll still agree, is a pain in the ass. Shadow Friend is still a pain in the ass. But someone like a Necro, uh, again, it depends individually on the player skill on the player heroes. But in this patch against Necro, you can dance more freely than you would have been able to in the previous patches. If you see him use the Q to harass, to last it, whatever, that's your that's your Q. I'm not sure if I spelled it correctly. That That's your hint to go in the, the middle of the wave, last hit, and then bail out, collect some runes. Okay. But just, but just, just because you have more region options. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one stupid um, question, like if the wave meets, uh, then I need to hit the uh, also hit the midi creep a bit uh, before that, right? Like I hit the midi creep maybe once or twice, and then hit the range creep uh, three times, and then walk up, uh, drop a remnant, and hit the range creep, right? Or yeah, that's the ideal That's the ideal scenario. Uh, for example, yeah. right right now uh, in this post moment, we don't really have the. Uh, spacing to make it properly, but uh, we can still make informed decisions based on this scenario. For example, your the, your range creep is hitting the melee one, so what you can do in this scenario is just uh, right click the Dragon Knight, track the creep back, and that's one creep you will be able to last it without using mana. Uh, and in that that next step, and it would transition into the next step, which you can just walk up to the range creep and get that one. So basically. Against DK, there are many, many ways you can save mana on last hits. Yeah, good idea. But right now, um, the biggest laning mistakes mistake in this game was that you, you've spent half your mana on creeps and half your mana on the DK. And as a result, most of your laning stage, you had no mana. Yeah, that's true. So in this and, lane, I should have um, spent most of my mana actually for the creeps and not so like most mostly no mana to, for to harass decay, right? If you were to ask me how to play this lane in a live match, I would tell you just push and jungle. That's a definition textbook farm lane. Yeah. And the DK is kind of, I'm not sure if intentionally or unintentionally playing it smart. He keeps his uh, health health pool a little bit on the lower side just to bait you into keeping trying to kill him. Mm. Did, did, did you notice that in their game or, or right now? He's always on the lower side, lower sa side of his health pool mm. just so you keep keep wanting to hit him and waste mana. Um, yeah, maybe I think his attitude might more be like, okay, I don't care, I, I can just take it, right? Like, I don't think that he wanted to, was thinking so much in advance. I think he was more like, okay, he cannot kill me anyways, he can do whatever he wants, he can hit me, I don't care. 
He is basically forcing you, baiting you, not forcing you, yep. into using mana on him instead of the farming. Yep. And, and just uh, looking back, if you would look back at this game, it's four minutes in and you haven't touched a single neutral camp. Not to kill, not even to stack against mm. a farm lane. Yep, no, no, it was good. Mm. I should, like in this game, maybe I shouldn't even have skilled Vortex. Like, would we have skilled Vortex here? Uh, come again? Yeah, uh, what, uh, the Vortex, the, the second skill, would you have skilled it here? You don't usually want Vortex in farm lanes. I mean, you could yeah. still have it to, 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 to mess with the last hits, but, but not for kill potential, at least. Well. So the biggest conclusion during these first five minutes is you've simply spent too much time on a kill lane when it wasn't a kill lane, which yep. isn't isn't uh, bad on itself. It's it's not it's not a mistake or error to attempt kill lane. It's hmm. a mistake to continue play to play a kill lane when it's it is no longer a kill lane. You gotta be yep. dynamic. You gotta be dynamic. You gotta read the room understand the situation and adapt. Yeah, no, I'm not good at that. Like right now, if you were to be ganked, you're dead. Yeah. All because you've spent so much mana and resources on just trying to kill DK. Uh, meanwhile, if you would have played this as a farm lane, mm. I wouldn't say you would have full mana, you would have a little bit more, but you would definitely have more HP, which removes you as a potential target to kill. Yeah, definitely. Like, your health pool just invites a rotation on it, in on itself. Your current health status. Yeah. He presses stun, anyone rotates. Yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah, no, it's true. I don't know, like sometimes I also have the feeling like <clears throat> if I mostly play the lane, uh, farm lane without even like uh, going for Vortex just to make sure I get the most of the farm actually, maybe I would have better games. Uh, you, it's uh, of course not optimal, but maybe it's uh, exactly what I said. Uh, a Vortex is just a little tiny bit piece of optimi optimization you can utilize. But mm. it would rarely impact the outcome of a farm lane. Kill lane is a different scenario, though. No. Now, I want to talk about this moment a bit. Um, what information would you say we have gained from DK's dive? Um, the dive uh, that he thinks he's stronger, and I also saw that I couldn't kill him, although I hit him, uh, tower hit him. Uh, yeah, so uh, is this what you meant? or Yes, yeah. that's what I meant. Uh, we can conclude that few things. He, given the opportunity, he will dive you. That's one thing. And the yep. second thing, he does not know. Uh, he does not know for sure if he mm. can secure the kill. In other words, we can bait him. He is very, very baitable. Okay. So, in my ideal game, I would recommend quickly finishing those creeps, making mm. a trip back to the base, and then, yeah, just killing him. Right now, he's slow, that's the perfect opportunity. Uh, yeah, what what would you sorry, what would you have done? Uh, went back to a base or, or not? Uh, yeah, let's remind a bit. Yeah, his dive tells us that he wants to kill us. So that's the information we have to. Um, yeah. I'm not really sure how to express this. Oh, you are going to base anyway. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I forgot. 
Yeah, this is when I was like, okay, maybe I can use this chance because he seems to be pushing, my, he wants to push my tower with his ultimate, right? So yes. I went back to base. Um, I think that was not uh, necessary. I want, just wanted to make sure that my creeps don't die. Uh, so, yeah, but I think the fortify was not necessary. So I, no. I was really, yeah. No, no, exactly. Walking to base is the correct choice, as I was trying to say, just because he is being reckless. He just used ultimate. He is still low. If you move, make the move to the base as soon as you clear the creeps, or if it's dangerous, as as just as soon as possible, mm. and yeah, and you load up on the on the on the on the mangoes, with the correct approach, with the correct jump, he is very killable. And I remember you tried to kill him. We will, we will break down that down soon as well. But yes, yeah. the correct move here is exactly going to the base for a refill and preparing for a first kill. Yeah. Because yeah, the mid laner right. made a mistake, and we are supposed to capitalize on that mistake. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about this jump. Mm -hmm. uh, the auto attack went into the creep. Uh, oh shit, really? Yes. The, the, the thing you're supposed to do is hold the right click or just spam the right click on the hero and as soon as the right click is confirmed you make the next move now the next move is not the vortex chest yet do you understand why mm, because you can tp out no 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 he right now is stationary he did not expect you if you drop a remnant without vortex he will have to eat it either way because he's stationary and you surprise him. Do you agree? Uh, yes. So right now it would be, it would have been better to write to him, remnant, and yes. hit, and then ch maybe um, use the uh, ultimate to chase him down, and then maybe vortex him if he reaches the tower or something. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, after the points I've made, you have a couple of ways to play it. Uh, the first thing that the first uh, play opportunity that opens up after you do remnant without vortex is the fact that the next remnant will definitely hit because then you will have vortex and the remnant will be off cooldown. So that's two remnants that will for sure hit the target. So oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's one way to play it. The other way to play it is yes, uh, just chase with the uh, overloaded hits because that's what you have maxed. So yeah, it, it was. Uh, it would have been a kill. If, well, I'm not blaming you. It's a high, uh, high pressure situation. But what happened wrong here is that. The bottle was not used and the mangoes were not used, which we could have done in between the champs. And in that case, uh, DK would be dead. Yeah, uh, that's what I find very tough. Like if you do, do small, I mean, if you do a big jump um, and bottling is easier. I, I did it in the, when after the TP, but we're in between like uh, small distances, which I need to uh, jump like a zip zap and then bottling, it's really tough, like mechanically. Yeah, uh, I, I, really, I really don't have an advice how to utilize that. It's just practice and try, try and practice. Yeah, I know. Just things to remember. Yeah. Because these, the problem... th these will be the reason some kills will slip out. Yeah. Um, I think with the first hit, it could also be one of my settings, like um, uh, there's one setting, like uh, you, um, when when you are on the lane and there you, your hero is not um, doing anything, it will auto attack or something, right? Yeah, could be th that way. No, I still use it. I just I just make sure to manually click the target side jump on. Okay, so after the TP, you would have zipped bottle and um, right click him as crazy. Yeah, right click just as you're sipping, and yeah, as soon as the hit is confirmed, which he will most likely feel uh, from practice, and then you just drop a remnant, 
and then continue as usual, either uh, zip with overloads, or vortex combo, drop a remnant here and there, and, and yeah, kill confirmed. Okay, but thank you. Uh, that's actually something I would have not recognized even if I watched the replay. I, I wouldn't have recognized because there was so much, like many creeps and uh, decay himself, that the overload charge didn't hit him. Uh, you saw that because you was... Uh, you you saw that visually, or how how did you know that? Yeah, I I saw it uh, on the screen visually. Yes, I visually. Mm. I didn't. I wouldn't have recognized it even. It's something to think about it. If if you're not right clicking your target, the storm will choose the uh, closest target, which in that case would be the creep. Yeah. Uh, this moment, let's talk about this moment, um, again, DK, not a target to kill, even if Oracle wants you to join him, just back off, and Oracle will back off as well, because he cannot solo kill it, and right now, what you're doing is that you're just wasting mana on a target you cannot kill, a best case scenario, you will walk out, worst case scenario, anyone rotates, and you are dead, no, it's true. Uh, you know what I thought, right? Because Oracle was here and I know that her uh, E actually does a lot of damage. I somehow hope that we can burst him down, but uh, yes, I recognize it's not possible. You are absolutely correct, but there is one caveat, which comes from the, from the laning, actually. If we have it been more efficient with the mana, mm. we would still have mana, and with mana, that kill would have been possible. But again, we gotta adapt to the current situation. In the current situation, you had no mana. If we storm players have no mana, we have to back off. Yep. My yeah, this little chase here. Stupid. <laughs> I tried to save the oracle. I should have just run, probably. There's one more thing I noticed with your gameplay patterns. Um, it seems you have this notion that if you click Vortex, you always have to follow it up with something. I, I've seen it with uh, with most of your Vortex usages. If you click Vortex, you will you will feel the need to either right click or place a remnant. And that's yeah, that's, some, <laughs> that's something you also need to be conscious of. There's no, no one forcing you to follow up the rem remnant with anything, just Vortex. Just press the Vortex and turn back ASAP. Yeah. Yeah, there sorry. was no need to right-click him or drop the remnant in some cases. <laughs> did, did, it, uh, did I right-click him or drop a remnant after that? Yes, you Vortexed and right-clicked him. Just out, <laughs> of, out of muscle memory, I would think. Yeah, it was muscle memory. I should have just right. Maybe it was also to be efficient. But it was stupid. <laughs> so, to conclude the first 10 minutes, just like, like I said to you, none of your movements made space. And can you now see why? Yeah, I, I mean, um, like, um, uh, like making space is a very broad uh, phrase, right? So yeah, you can yeah, make, sp um, because like what I um, think or assume when I hear this is would mm, making space, uh, ganking side lanes, for example, or helping team, but also making space in the mid lane. I think you, um, what do you say? You, you mean this by, uh, this is what you um, mean is by pr uh, playing the, um, your lane correctly and efficiently and winning the lane and uh, maybe also um, force enemy supports or something to um, go to your lane, right? Right, yeah, I, I guess we can elaborate a little bit because it, it is true, it is a very broad topic. So in this game exactly, uh, since mid lane, mid lane hero is not really a kill lane. We gotta look at other ways to make impact, impactful movements around the map. Uh, the the way you did make space in this game was actually you did force a couple of rotations, but ultimately because you had no banner, those rotations did not uh, lead to anything significant. 
and I think that that was the biggest issue. Yeah. While while you did four rotations with the a little bit reckless jump jumping around, uh, those rotations were not leading to kills. Mm. So instead, you could have opted to try to make plays in the side lanes because uh, I think last track is very very killable at all stages. Lone through it, not so much. Well, it, it depends on the offlaner. I suppose with the underload, you could make plays as well. Or alternatively, if you don't want to waste the side lanes, uh, the way you can still make pressure in the mid lane is simply by always having the correct mana amount to de-push the creeps so that DK does not have a free time hitting the tower. Yeah, that's <clears throat> true. Okay, let's talk about this moment here. And, and also another pattern I see a lot in your games. Okay. The pattern is, is that sometimes when you jump, you're not really sure what you want to accomplish with that jump. Like, if you read the scenario, in this case, what do you think you should do with the fresh memory right now? Uh, I know, I think I also remember what I did. Like, my, my thought was actually, uh, like, um, I, I, there are three heroes and they also like the K and so on. They have disables, right? I, I'm not, I was not, I, no, I was pretty sure I could not kill anyone here. Like DK is impossible to touch. I could also not kill or jump Dawnbreaker and uh, Jakir was also uh, tough. Like what I chose was actually tr uh, trying to get the creeps, incoming creeps low or dead. Uh, so uh, it's only the tower against three heroes, so they could not push so easily. But maybe now that I look at it, um, I saw the Wind Ranger TP2, but I mean, she's also very low HP and so on. Maybe um, what I could uh, could also have done is to zip um, to, to the left uh, so I can hit the Dawnbreaker uh, and maybe zip him, uh, not zip him, vortex him and hit him a bit. Um, and just to, yeah, to, uh, you know what I mean? Like zip to the left, uh, to the left um, bottom corner, not bottom corner, to the left of the tower, so I can... Yeah, uh... I, I understood. Yeah. So there are a couple of ways to correctly play this. What I would yeah. mostly recommend is, just by looking at the situation, we do have three disables, yes, but two of those disables are unreliable. Jake yeah. here needs to aim it, and uh, Dawnbreaker needs to prime it. Only DK has the instant disable. So what I yeah. would recommend in this situation is actually zip right into the DK, vortex him. Just by doing that, you will force Dawnbreaker and Shakiro to react, which will most likely also force them to eat the remnant. After they react, I would think their initial uh, also, another reaction would be to try to aim to stun you, but because the DK is currently being vortexed, you are free to zip around and either force them to miss their stuns or force them to not use their stuns at all. All the while, with every single hit, you can do overloaded hits into either Jakiro or Dawnbreaker. Now, this shouldn't outright kill them, but this will damage them by quite a lot, eventually forcing a retreat. Or, in the case of the Windrager, completely turned around fight. Did that make sense? Uh, yes, I, I, I just... Um, I would like to be able to uh, replay the scenario, because uh, even though you described it and I understood what you meant, I would be like, um, I'm not sure how it will be played out in the end, uh, because I, I understood what you said. I, I just think that uh, maybe I fuck up uh, somehow mechanically, or I run out of mana during all this, what you uh, said, and I would just die with the tower, I don't know. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it uh, otherwise if you weren't TPing from the base, but from the base, 
you basically have like mm -hmm. 10 times the amount of region you would usually have. And that would be enough to do all the movements I've said and still have around 75% mana left for any yeah. follow-ups. Yeah. Uh, so right now you would zip, um, zip to the decay vortex him, um, drop a remnant, and then maybe and zip and to then the bot. Pepper the supports with overloaded hits. Uh, okay. But uh, like vortex a decay and zipped around and hit the supports with overloaded hits to make sure that they get low and they will retreat, right? Yeah, they will either get low, they will try to aim their unreliable stuns on you, potentially mm -hmm. miss or retreat. No matter the way you look at it, the responses you force is beneficial for you and bad for them. Okay. Actually, but what I did was not great, but also not that bad, right? Now that you look at it. It wasn't that bad, but it did lead to lead you to once again expanding your entire mana pool. Yeah. And there are a lot of moments where where you expand your whole mana pool just to yeah, make yeah. a small play. Yeah, that's true. Um, that, but that's, still, yeah. that's primarily what I meant is that your movements made no space because the movements where you spent your mana pool mostly resulted in a kill on a support and then you had no mana to make any proper plays. Yeah, uh, the, the right problem... now you're sitting in the mid lane against still a farm lane without any mana which yep. which means you simply are not able to organize ganks, respond to ganks. To put it other words, you yourself force yourself to play passively. Yeah. Uh, um, one more thing I noticed just now is that y you very rarely are checking the side lanes for potential movements there. Mm. Again, you should be thinking, where can I where can I be of most use as a mid laner whose job is to make space? Can I yeah. can I go bottom? Can I kill rush track? Can I stay middle? Can I make place middle? The answer is no, there's a DK. I cannot make good place in the middle. So I should be looking at the top, at the bottom. Or the worst case scenario, I should be stacking and clearing jungle. So I... Uh, let me rephrase. If I cannot make place without Orchid, I should be making movements to make my Orchid come faster. Did that make sense? Yeah, so stacking, you mean? Yeah, stacking and clearing. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, right, I, well, we talked about that, right? I played the lane uh, like very inefficiently, so um, I just, yeah, it's like the, the mistakes from my early game just comes. Uh, yes, me, it's, it's really snowballs. Weak. It snowballs into a huge disadvantage yeah. in the mid game. Yeah. Um, one question, like uh, what you suggested when I. Uh, TP'd in like before, some minutes ago uh, when the, there were three enemy heroes. Um, I um, sh should also have botted during each zip in between, right? Um, because either way, I would have run out of mana, I think. By default, and anytime you TP from the front and you zip, yeah. uh, you, yeah, you, you battle. Yeah, get you battle, into my brain. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, Lina, I think um, the when I TP'd and then I decide to hit the creeps uh, and then uh, we create Dawnbreaker, even if I did this and zipped uh, and used the bottles um, more in between zips, I would have more mana also. Like, maybe it would be a similar outcome um, compared to your scenario, which what you would have done. Do, do you know what I mean? Uh, if you're saying that you also could have use the bottle while zipping on on the way you played it in this game, then yes, yeah, still. The answer is yes, bottle is always... Spamming bottle after you exit the base is always the most beneficial way for the mana pool. Yeah, I need to spam it more. It's really tough, as I said, because there's so much like pressure uh, on... You need to play this correctly, otherwise maybe you fuck up and die. Uh, or And also, like, um, mechanically, it's not easy. And I, I play a lot of actually... Um, like uh, high mechanical heroes, high mechanically demanding heroes. 
Yeah, it's just something to think about and try to execute it. Yeah, yeah, I need to. Uh, yeah, the way, the the point I made about uh, mana efficiency problems in the early game also means that when the opportunity presents itself for you to punish the enemy hero, you do not have the mana to do so. Like right now, Arcane Rune, if you had three mangoes here with the Arcane Rune, with the tower, the DK is absolutely dead. But the way you played it before, uh, I want to stress this, I want to repeat this, that you gotta play Storm in a way that you will always have the resources to punish opponents' mistakes. If you play Storm and never have mana to respond to the side lanes, to the towers, to anything, then yeah. you will not be able to punish the mistakes, you will not be able to make responses. Yeah. And right now the DK is making a mistake, but you cannot punish it, because the previous play you made left you low on mana. Like with the arcane rune, and let's assume I have full mana, uh, I wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't be able to kill him right now. But with mangoes, or uh, right now, you would have four creeps and a tower and the arcane and the vortex. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's dead. Really? Whoa. Well, okay. I like. I, I couldn't really assume it uh, because now, right now, uh, I I uh, lack the experience to um, know if it's possible for me. Like I know, I I'm, uh, I know that the cane rune gives you uh, a lot of possibilities, um, but I was not like I, I could not. Um, but because he has uh, full HP, everything, uh, I would not be able to. Uh, um, how how do you say it? Um, uh, guess if I can kill him. Yeah, uh, yeah, he was killable, eh? and yeah. Uh, uh, look at it this way. Right now. Even when you technically only touch him once during this whole engagement, he has still lost half of his health pool from nothing, just for the tower and the creeps yeah. and, and the soul ring, of course. Yeah. The problem I had was that his uh, debuff was on me when I tried to, like, um, right now, <laughs> that uh, this shit went on me and I could not region. Because I was, I tried to actually prepare to jump, as you see that I put my healing self in. Uh, but then this hit, this exact hit at this moment uh, got on me and um, yeah, everything got uh, cancelled. And I also wanted to fortify and it was slow. Uh, yes, just, just, there is, just so there is no miscommunication or misconceptions. I'm not saying the correct move right now is to jump him. Mm. I'm saying if you had full mana, he would be dead. But right now, in this case, you are yeah. in no position to punish his mistake. So there is no need for you to linger here and think about how to kill him, because in this scenario, uh, realistically, it is too risky to kill him. Okay, okay. Mm. Which okay. is exactly what happened. Like, you, you still have half your mana, half your health, and you're sitting here with no real plan what to do, and in the end, you're forced to just bail. Yeah. So that's another uh, huge efficiency mistake. Yeah. It it was surprising me a bit. I, I didn't check his items, and I was surprised that he got a dagger. Almost barely survived here. Yeah. Well, yeah. Even if he does get a gather dagger, it, it you shouldn't be in any position to mm. still be at that place at that time with the resource situation you were in. Yeah. Um, right now, you still have Arcane, you still have TP. Again, you must be mm -hmm. thinking, what place can I make right at this moment? Because you still mm -hmm. have extremely good uh, advantages position with the Arcane being in the fountain and having the uh, portal scroll. Yeah. And just oh. one glance at the mini one, one glance at the minimap would tell you that Mr. Lone Druid. It's really, really close. Yep. Underlord has mana, has the spells. Lone Druid should be dead. Yeah, yeah, I should have done that. I was thinking actually. You saw me also. Uh, this my perspective, or is it yours? Okay, uh, I don't remember. 
Yeah, but uh, actually check. I was looking top and thinking about that, but I was also like, okay, my game, um, I'm so far behind anyways, and there was a huge creep wave in the middle, which I wanted to catch. I should have probably just used the cane rune TP top and kill the lone root. Yeah, that's what I would have recommended. Yeah, uh, like, I mean, it's it was such a messy game. It's a no... Uh, you wouldn't have gone bot, right? Because I was also considering to help bot because I recognized and I also pinged that the K was coming, uh, going bottom. Without the tower, there is no way. Uh, I mean, yes, you might have made some kills, but again, you would end up with no mana and force to go back to base. Yeah, because the t even if I TP bottom, the distance would be too great, and I yeah, would have. Yeah, you would to have to zip to just to cover and join the fight. Yeah. Okay. So. Lone Root would be better because he was closer to our top tier yeah. one tower. Realistically, you would kill the Lone Root and still have like 75% mana left, I would say. Yeah, but to make other plays. No, no, but it should be. Yeah. The one, one thing you did good here is that the ward is really good since it allows you to see courier movements. You will allow it will allow you to see any hero who is low who just wants to feast on some creeps on their way back to base. That's that's a good play, commendable. Yeah, I was thinking I, I need to uh, use the word anyways. I was actually not sure. Uh, it's, uh, good that you um, talk about that. Uh, because I was like, okay, I have a ward. Uh, I could use it either the runes or um, there. And but I was also like thinking, um, like in a game where I dominate, I'm, I'm really sure that this ward is perfect. But right now it's a game where actually we are not really strong. And I was like, okay, I... I I don't think that it will we will benefit so much in the future because I'm too weak to kill the ones farming there anyways. Yeah, uh, it's not the most ideal ward spot just because just yeah because of the points you said. But since you are getting close to Orchid, you alone will be uh, benefiting from the vision because with the Orchid, you should be able to kill most of the heroes except for Death Knight, I think, uh, who are visiting that spot. Okay, let's talk about this moment here. Uh, like the what my fox thoughts were during this moment was like, I saw <clears throat> I saw uh, many of them were mid don't do it in their jungle, so I decided to at least hit the top tower to create a bit pressure. So, anti mage has uh, they don't run at anti mage, and when I saw that the enemies were coming like you see them right it's four enemies i decided to back off i didn't want to die any further um to also not uh, delay the orchid more orchid more and i felt like they were stronger and dominating anyway so like that i couldn't really kill someone without being low on mana and um dying that's correct everything you said is correct but the way you have approached the situation Mm. Is again the problem I see in your in your games in this game in particular. Let's let's rewind. Okay, I used too much mana to get out. Or... Yes, yes. The outcome is is always that. I mean, this game has this pattern that uh, you make a play, yeah. uh, and you have no mana, or you attempt to make a play, and you have no mana, and in the end, the end result is that you have no mana, ha have half the game. And, and right now we're trying to think of the ways to fix it. And in this particular moment, yes, you are you are absolutely correct. The enemies were dangerous, you were in no position to fight. But the way you should have played it, let's think about it. Again, uh, yeah. you, you see Jakiro, he in, its, in on itself is not that dangerous. He still has to prime his stun. You can still be walking. But right now you've lost, you only have 60% of your mana left because you zipped from a teleportation. So yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's more no, no. efficient movement. Yeah, let me correct it why I did it. Uh, I saw the DK TPing and I re uh, remember that he had a um, dagger. I was just like, okay, just get out as uh, soon as possible. Because I was not fearing the Jakiro, I was fearing the DK with dagger. Uh, again. You are correct, but we gotta look at the bigger picture. If the DK engages you right there and then as you are walking, 
Mm. You still have Wind Ranger to buy your time to escape should the scenario you were thinking about happens. Mm. And then afterwards, uh, we have pretty much confirmed, you have pretty much confirmed that the enemy will chase after, after you or the Wind Ranger. Mm. So you got to think about how, since you have confirmed you are escaping, you got to confirm how to most effectively escape. Yeah. And in that case, I would think the most effective way would be to walk into the woods. Just so the enemy does not have free moment to stun you. In yeah. the case that the enemy still chases you, you can always zip out. But zipping out should not be your default response. Zipping out should be last resort response. Okay, that's good. That's a good word. Yeah. Did, did I, this I entire like section makes sense. The what? Did this entire segment make sense of analysis? Yeah. Or do yeah. you still have follow-up questions about it? Yeah, so I should have gone to the jungle to the left and just move, uh, like running, without using mana, and then I should have maybe, if I saw them, uh, would you have zipped across the left left um, border? You know what I mean? Uh, from there to yeah, a bit further yep. down and then yep. run yep. Sure. to the jungle? Sure. Okay. Your, your so... movements should not be default-ish. Your movements should be responsive-ish. Okay. Uh, so you would have run back just uh, on the trees on the left side, and then zipping across this uh, bridge where there are no trees, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. You you lose their vision, and if you, if you still see them chasing you, then you consider zipping the distance. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's actually better. I wouldn't have come up with that. Uh, it's also, I think, more um, a panic thing of me. Like I, sometimes uh, it's uh, there are some scenarios in my games where I panic a bit and then I just zip too much and lose too much mana and then I'm out alive. But I, I cannot really do something. Yeah, that, that that's a practice thing. You gotta condition yourself mentally. I I don't have any advice for this. Yeah, that's a, yeah, panic reaction. Uh, I do have an advice for this, like, there is absolutely nobody, so you shouldn't be wasting mana here, for example. Mm. I think, can you turn on the fog from, uh, or maybe my perspective, because I was, I think I was not sure if there was somebody. Uh, like, I, I, right now the, the map was, uh, I mean, um, if you pause for one thing, I, um, Okay, yeah, maybe like right now, uh, I know that they were tipping top and they were coming. I mean, they are in the top left corner, right? Uh, uh, like almost everybody. I, yeah, I think yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. And what my thoughts now, right now were, okay, I, I have not much time left uh, because of decay dagger and I just wanted to hit the creeps. Uh, and I think I want to run uh, at either to the bottom or to the right, just to make sure sure that I don't run to them and make them chase me. I see. So you, you were just uh, thinking of baiting them. Yes, I, I just wanted to, like, this was my way to create space uh, because we didn't have anything to fight them and uh, we were too weak anyways, right? So I just wanted, really wanted to clear this wave and then get the fuck out. Sure, sure. Valid reasoning. Uh, just one correction. Because yeah. you, you still can see them on the minimap. Yeah. Uh, you can pretty much deduct that they will move as a group. So if you see those two, you can assume the others are behind. Yeah. And as long as you see division on them, that's when you can actually save time and continue just walking uh, to drop a remnant and do some right clicks. Again, uh, I want to emphasize your movements have to be uh, not default. Like, yeah. if you see the enemies, you, you, you start wasting mana. It should be reactionary. You, you only start wasting mana when there is actual necessity to waste mana. Until then, you can consider your options. You can actually not even approach this wave at all. 
you can simply show yourself for one hit and then back up and that still accomplishes the same goal you were thinking about you show yourself you make them chase you but either way zipping like like that it, it doesn't really help you uh, shave off any seconds what it does is again creates a situation when you are too low on mana to potentially respond or punish mistakes yeah my i mean my folks were just to clear the wave also like um because every cleared wave would be more seconds in total that's why i did it sure i mean you, you have good reasoning to do mm -hmm. things the correct way but the way you approach those things mm -hmm. are often inefficient yeah I, I have no comments here. Seems like a pretty usual skirmish. Could have been done better, could have been done worse. All that. Uh, actually, I was wanted to ask you, uh, would you have... I mean, I thought also to go on the uh, Jakio, which would have maybe been a kill, but then I was also like, the others are behind him, on the like, after, uh, beh um, behind the Jakio. So I was like, okay, going for Dawnbreaker, but then <laughs> the, the Ice Path of com was coming. No, I don't know. Uh, the issue is that you still do not have Orchid yet, so I would have actually um, used my mana. Again, the issue here is because of the previous place, you only have so little mana to work with. Yeah. If, if you have more, I, I would have easily jumped across this whole distance and we, you and the team could have eliminated Dawnbreaker before the others joined and just all walked away with a kill and zero losses. Yeah. True. Uh, one question. So you would never zip, really, uh, mostly. Uh, it's mostly you would like only zip to kill if it's possible, right? Or to get out. Yeah, yeah. I, I big zips, especially early game, mm. should accomplish a very, very certain goal. Yeah, okay. Maybe you need a big zip with the orchid to kill a very beefy hero. Maybe yeah. you need to make a big zip to, like right now, to. Uh, cross the distance before the enemy does, but usually, yeah. yeah. Any movement which wastes your mana, you should be really careful doing it. Okay, so you would you try to be at maybe ninety percent of the mana every time as possible, right? I mean, um, like to have as much mana as possible. Of course, that's the main topic of this uh, this coaching session right now. Is the, the more often you have mana to work with, the more often you can punish opponents' mistakes. No. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious for Storm, but yeah. I don't know, It's uh, I think this the mana management is one of my um, biggest issues, really. Well, uh, and we did have pretty good pointers on what exactly was going wrong with this game, with the mana management. Yeah. The bulk of it being, of course, keep playing the kill lane. Yeah. The, the, Exactly, like this game, it uh, was a misplay during the early stage, which, which led to that. Um, yeah, like I, I um, how do I say it? It's, it's not not every game is like this. Uh, I often also play uh, correctly the the early game, uh, but then I feel that during my mid game that I also waste too much mana during I don't know what what will happen. Yeah, the, the same pointers we had in the mid game in this game, I'm sure you can apply to the other games. Um, my point is also uh, during um, like you, you, um, when when I fear that they can jump me, right? It's um, I fear that I tend to zip too late, right? Because there are also scenarios where I I'm not like okay, I don't need to zip, I can just move and run, and then they. Um, are able to close the gap, uh, which I didn't expect, and then they kill me. This this is why sometimes I tend to zip a bit more than I need to, uh, just to make sure that I at least don't die. Um, but yeah. Sure, sure. Again, while it's reasoning, it's better to be safe than dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The 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 skill factor and what separates players from higher and lower MMRs is is the feeling they have of uh, when to do which yeah. i have no advice it's just uh, practice 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 
characters. Oh, I don't know. Like uh, my other heroes are, I told you, like Storm, uh, not so, <laughs> Ember or um, Void Spirit are different uh, because I don't need to uh, have such a good mana management. I mean, I have to, but I won't. If I want to get out with um, Ember Spirit, uh, I don't need to think about uh, my mana because I mostly have a remnant somewhere else. So I can get out, and with Void Spirit, it's also straightforward. Um, and it's easier to escape without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's why I firmly believe that uh, mastering Storm in on itself will teach you the fundamentals like mana management, proper movements, and game sense. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's talk about this mo uh, this moment right here. I, I can see the reasoning. You're level 12. Uh, the ultimate is strong. You have Orchid is strong. You have team behind you. So yes, uh, the thought process is to use these advantages uh, factors to try to kill the DK. I agree. Yeah. Uh, we should try to kill the DK. But let's now analyze the approach to kill the DK. Now, it is clear to you, to me, to anyone, that you should be making your move before those creeps die, yeah? Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, and you're a little bit late. Now, if he would rewind, if he would have jumped like 3 seconds earlier, it's the same scenario from uh, the landing stage, where if you zip on the DK, just from the surprise factor, he will be forced to eat the remnant before he's able to respond. Which again leaves you open to follow up with the, either Vortex, the second remnant, the Orchid, uh, and any, anything, whatever. And uh, get your team to arrive faster. But just this, this one uh, miscalculation on when should you jump made you fumble and uh, ruined the entire engagement. So oh, um, you would have jumped in the, such a way that of course the, the creeps are here. And then, I mean, there are creeps uh, which he needs to hit. And then you would, um, in the air, you would all hit and right click him um, and then drop the remnant, right click him again, and then vortex, right click him, uh, remnant may, or zip. I don't know which comes earlier. And then uh, the team would arrive, right? Precisely so. Now, a couple of things to mentally calculate in your games before you engage, like. The absolutely latest point on which you should jump is when there is one creep remaining, because after that he's a gunner. Yeah. But you also cannot jump too early, because you need to buy time for your team to arrive. Yeah. So ideally, around two creeps you should jump. Right. This moment, as soon as he presses the uh, fire breath, that's your cue to jump in. He no longer has fire breath, and the creeps are about to die. That's the absolutely the perfectest moment to jump him. Yeah. Do the combo, team arrives, he's dead. Yeah. Uh, one question about the the jumping thing. You you would, uh, like, I, I don't know when I need to zip and then or hit and uh, vortex or uh, zip, I mean, zip and orchid and then uh, remnant and then vortex. Like, the best case would be to zip and um, remnant. Uh, and if it's, the, the enemy has um, blink or something, you would... No, I, I mean, I, I awkward him, so it doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, it's case-on-case -case basis, but in the case of this particular engagement... In the case of this particular engagement, it's always best to work it as early as possible, so you can accumulate the most damage for the finale. So, in this case, the best case is... Zip in apply work, both Orchid and the Overload hit at the same time, they're not exclusive, you can you can stack them, and then proceed as usual. Yeah. Just, just because you have the element of surprise, no vision, no nothing. If he was in a more open area, more dangerous area, then yeah, you, would, you might want to uh, actually open with the Vortex, just so he doesn't blink away. Yeah. Okay. But uh, like the ideal scenario would always be zip and remnant and then um, vortex, right? Well, yeah. Uh, okay. If if you are certain that you will surprise the enemy and he will eat the remnant from your zip and your positioning, 
then that's what you do. You feed him the remnant, and then you save the vortex to react to whatever movement will, the enemy will make. Yeah. Uh, and another question: If I hit the overload charge only on the creeps, he is not slowed, right? Uh, there is AOE. AOE is, huh? The slow is in AOE. The damage is also in AOE. Oh, okay. He, so he will not eat the right click damage, but he will still eat the overload damage and the slow. Ah, okay. It's the right click damage uh, which is missing. It's it's in the spell description. Three hundred radius. Yeah, I'm, uh, it's a bit too. Yeah, I should have read it a bit more better. <laughs> Something you should have known from the first hours of Storm, honestly. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Sometimes I, I assume things because I'm too lazy or something. Oh, lazy isn't a good mindset in Dota. So yeah, again, as a result, the same pattern is that you make a movement, you end up with no mana, you have to retreat, and no space has been made. Yeah, it's fucked up. Uh, it was fucked up. If, um, maybe, yeah, if I would have killed him, it would have been better, of course. Yeah, 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 of course, killing is the ideal choice here. Yeah, but um, even after the kill, I would have not much mana left, right? I, I, uh, let's assume I did it correctly. Still, that's space made. That's one less hero pushing. That's you and the team suddenly having the free movement to, uh, for example, smoke, invade mm. their jungle, ward up their jungle, maybe get a second kill. A kill is literally space, because it translates to potential place, which yeah. will translate to other potential place. Yeah, yeah. Place. Not good. And same pattern. No, no mana, no impact. Hmm. Just because you have decided that DK should be a target you're jumping on. When in reality, uh, in this situation, you you have the freedom to choose. You have the tower, you have underworld spells. No one here is at an immediate risk on, of, of dying, so there is no need for you to respond so quickly. You could have just lingered right where you are right now. Just ling linger here, right here. Just sit tight, you have full mana, you have orchids, just sit tight and observe the situation. Like your most ideal kill target is obviously Chakiro, because he'll be further away. If you jump him, the enemy team will not should not have time to respond. And if they do respond, you should always have enough time to jump back. But if you jump right into the thick of the fight, then you are at risk of eating this stun, this stun, this stun, and every single other stun in existence. Like right here, just stay here and observe the battlefield for a little bit. This would have been the right play if DK was dead and they were still pushing, because in that case they would be at a disadvantage. Um, my thoughts were at this situation that I, yeah, that the um, underlord is gone on and uh, that DK was out of position because he was hit by tower and uh, yeah, and I also wanted to save the um, underlord. True, true. You, you have you have good thought process. It's the ex execution that that's always uh, messing with you. Yeah. No, it's it's true. I agree. It's just <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, actually, it's yeah, it's uh, funny. Like if I would play not Storm, <laughs> like Ember, I would uh, do it completely different, and this would not lead me to these uh, situations, as I said. And this is also your point, like um, well, our, uh, like my point, uh, that uh, Storm is um, requires a lot of thinking about situations and uh, going on the right targets. Because you know, with Ember, I mostly not go on one specific target. Uh, it's more like a broad uh, audience of targets. True, true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this 
this here will be the last thing we can talk about because uh, after this is just the same things repeated. So, can you guess what I'm gonna say? Um, yes, I think I have. A, I know exactly what you want to say. Um, you say that, uh, like, it doesn't make sense to jump on this target because it's just a support, and I'm on the risk of dying. Maybe <laughs> this is option A. Uh, the the other option is that I need my dust uh, swapped in because um, he has glimmer, um, or the, maybe the third option is that they can react very fast. You to I have no idea. Sorry. Uh, again, your thought process is correct, but there's one crucial point of information missing, and that that every single hero, other than Shakira, you don't know where they are. Okay. Mm. As soon as you jump, you might you might uh, eat uh, DKs with a blink stun. You might eat bears uh, fear. You might eat uh, lash rax stun. Mm. Basically, if you don't have the information on what can kill you, you cannot allow yourself to go in the first place. It's not about us. It's not about killing a support. It's about it's about putting yourself in a really dangerous situation. Especially for support. Yeah. So you would have, uh, if I would have the information of all other heroes, it would have been okay, right? This scenario will pop up later because I think he will go on Shakira the second time. Yes. And and that's <laughs> where we can talk about it. Yeah. Like right now, if you have seen more heroes with the haste, then I myself would still have went in, not to kill, not to kill but to force responses. Mm -hmm. I mean, you did force responses. In the end, the play was wrong, but the play's outcome was right. You escape and you force responses. That's space, that's good. Yeah, so now you would have probably just run out and go to help the team or uh, like somewhere else, right? Not going back because you already forced the, the uh, response. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now we have scattered and we can look for counter plays. Yeah. Anti-Mage has all the space to push. He, he's happy. You made space for him. Yeah. They would have no. Did I jump on Jaku? No, I was like looking at the bottom. Yeah, I saw them dying and I was like, okay, not going there. Also, 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 this is the first moment in the game where yeah. you have actually been efficient with your mana. You simply run away with haste instead of sipping half the map. Oh yes, yeah. You mean right now what I did to right now was good? Like uh, from zip, not zipping? Uh, let's summarize this entire moment. The only mistake... Uh, uh, pam 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 pam. If you... Let's assume that you have seen where the most dangerous heroes are. If you would have seen where the most dangerous heroes are, then oh. the play you made here would have 100% have been the absolute perfectest play you could have made at this moment. Mm. In the end, it did work out. You, uh, you did force responses, you wasted only a fraction of your mana. Yeah. Could have wasted less, of course, but still good. And just uh, walked away. That's yeah. efficiency, that's good. Yeah. The only bad part from that play is that you even attempted to make that play without having all the information. Yeah. Um, can you go a few seconds now uh, again? Because I jumped Jakiro, right? And uh, I die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We, 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 will, we will end the topic on the Jakiro, yes. Yeah. So my thoughts now <laughs> that they are mostly uh, bottom because I saw Dawnbreaker, Lashrek, uh, and Lone Root was to the right. Now I was like, okay, this guy is killable. And I used everything. I was like, why did he not die? And um, yeah. And then they came and killed me. I forgot the Dawnbreaker ultimate. The play was good. The attack process was good. Mm -hmm. But in the end, what got you was the same thing we have talked about the entire game. Is that you have allowed your mana reserves to be less of what you need to punish mistakes. If you had yeah. more, the Shakira would be dead, you would have made the right play. Yeah, uh, can you go before the kill? Like, I had almost had 
I don't know, 80% of my mana, I was like, what, um, should I have jumped from a, a smaller distance or how, how yes. could I? Yes, yes. Yeah? That's also, I mean, the distance I think was good. Yeah. Uh, again, the thing, this is the third time I can make the same advice. If you yeah. are surprising someone with a charm, yeah. just drop the remnant first. Okay, after zipping, uh, like the zip right click and then... Yeah. Uh, okay. That's also, something I Also know, the actually. fact that you were late to do the dust. Yeah. So we we'll have remnant, then hit, vortex hit, and then remnant again, and then he would be dead, right? Actually, um, in this very, very particular scenario, the correctest play is actually to vortex as soon as you can connect the vortex just so so if if not if not then it's exactly what happened he will take reduced damage because of the glimmer's magic resistance and half your magic ah. is damage ah yeah yeah true i forgot that it, oh, yeah reduce the uh, magic damage also so i needed to on glimmer targets i need to uh jump and then uh zip uh, i mean what um Orchid and then um, not right click but instantly vortex and then hit and drop random. Uh, since Orchid is super high range, Orchiding first is fine, but after that, just you gotta spam the vortex. Yeah. Actually, even in some cases, you can even not vortex, uh, not Orchid. In this case, you can also even not Orchid because that still gives him a little bit more time to react and, and glimmer. Ideally, yeah. I could have jumped with the Vortex and only the Vortex first. Okay. That's the first thing he sees. Jakiro sees the Vortex and he has no time to react. Then you can uh, dust, you can Orchid, you can do the regular routine. Yeah. Okay, got it off. I, I'm not sure. Because there are different uh, things which you can um, use to, uh, during jumping on the, like initiating on a single target, right? It's a... Uh, they're different stuff, and I, I'm not sure if I'm, my brain is actually capable of uh, processing, like, doing the correct things for the correct situations. Like, I think my how I um, think or my brain thinks is, uh, like, doing, having some basic things, and uh, ideally it would be always the same. <laughs> uh, the thing is with Storm is that you're not, you're not even locked into single single right answer like in this case in this particular movement the play if you would have spent a little bit less mana from the, uh, from uh, the previous engagement one minute ago you could have killed Shakiro your way you could have simply jumped and you would have enough mana left to kill him if you had close to 100 percent instead of like 60. Mm. so in the end it's all about mana efficiency man yeah, mana true. efficiency uh, one other question, like if I would have jumped, let's assume I jumped from a, a closer distance, uh, would it be, it would be less damage when going in with the zip zap, right? But it would be maybe I would have more mana left and uh, the kill possibility would be higher maybe. Uh, is it true or? Uh, half of it is true, half of it is wrong. If you would have went in from lesser distance, you would have more mana, but not to kill, but you force these parts and bail out. Oh shit, okay. Then I wouldn't have been able to kill him, but bail the other ones and get out. Yeah, then uh, anti-mage would still have space to push. Yeah. And yeah, and the enemy would be all converged in one spot and you would be alive and, and well. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the, that, I think that's the breaking point where we lost the game. Yeah, no, it's good. Thanks for the analysis, definitely. I think what uh, when you talk to me, you recognize I have good ideas, but like the um, I of course the mana management is not good, and um, yeah, it's mostly actually this. And but the ideas are correct, and the way I approach them is uh, not correct. I, what I fear is actually that I uh, this is so um, deep because I it's not like that I. Um, play storm for my second time or something it's actually more what i fear is that it's so um much uh how do you say it uh, ingredient to me that uh like it's so deep inside me that i'm need a lot of time to correct it and maybe i'm not even able to correct it because i it's so um mechanically deep inside no that's fine that's expected actually because 
uh, yeah, with Storm you will need a lot of games to, to get things correct. I mean, some people are gifted, I myself am not, uh, I have thousands of Storm games and and only recent, well not recently, I mean, it took me a while to, to reach where, to level where I am now, but still, I mean, it's it's possible. Some people will do it with more games, some people will do it with less games, but in the end, if you keep practicing, I think everything is achievable. Yeah, hope, hopefully. It's, I don't, like, uh, with other heroes, I, I'm more gifted than with Storm. Uh, and with Storm, I have a good, uh, like, good ideas, but the uh, implementation is uh, often not correct. And, yeah, I think mostly if I have a good early game, like, if I get in a farm and everything, I can uh, play better because I have more items right now. I would not only have these items, but I would have uh, at least Kaya more or Bloodstone or something. And then the game would look different. Then I don't need to play without having any resources. Of course, but yeah. uh, games like these is also very good because it forces you to approach situations differently, which you should be ready for. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, w one more thing I was neglecting to mention was the items. Uh, in the early game, you made so many movements, so many, so many attempted plays, but you never once picked up the wand to collect charges. That that's a huge misplay. Yeah, actually true. I don't have wand. Another thing right now is you're making yules. I don't think yules does anything here. Oh yeah, it does. I, I would have uh... one straight BKB. Um, okay, yeah, no, uh, but I uh, checked the item of Dawnbreaker and wanted to have something to purge because he had the uh, Orchid. Uh, <laughs> again, a really good idea. But yeah. if we spend more than one second thinking about it, is that you get Orchided, you use to dis dispel the Orchid, and then you will just eat another stun right after you land. But then it means you would never go Yutes, right? You would mostly go PKB. Most of the time, Yutes is very niche. Yutes is when, uh, let's put it this way, Yutes is great when you can cover a couple of bases with the Yutes. It's like when there is a really nasty spell from the enemy side, you can purge with Yutes, like a, a black hole or something, or a void in the chronosphere, or maybe Silence of Ultimate from yourself. Yeah. But in most cases, PKB will always be more versatile. Yeah, I think I've, I've said everything I wanted to say, unless you have some more questions. No, uh, that's uh, very good, thanks. Uh, yeah, I don't know, it's, uh, it's, uh, there are so many uh, like things I need to correct somehow, I think. No. Okay, yeah, in that case, I will end the session now. Yep, yeah. okay, thanks very much.